and welcome, welcome to another edition of Learning Strategies, where we discuss all kinds of learning strategies. And we do that with no other than Kate Benson. Kate Benson is the International Director for Education for the Society of NLP. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And, and she is, uh, well, I think, uh, the international expert on learning strategies. So let's welcome her uh, after I've uh, greeted all the visitors. Welcome and welcome, Jane. Good to see you again. Hi, Kate. There you are. Hello. How are you? I am doing uh, well, uh, reasonably OK. So I'm just adjusting. I, can, I can't tell till, he, till I come on screen whether or not you're going to be able to see me. Is that all right? Yes, excellent. Thank you. So you're doing reasonably OK. I am doing reasonably OK. What would make it even better, Joost? Uh, have the Dutch tax authorities uh, been blown up? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I know that we can help with that. Not within our control at the moment, or hopefully not. So far, yeah. So I'm looking forward to today. Who have we got? Jane's yes. here. I've do, um, just so you know, because I picked up from last week that Jane likes things in pictures. So we've, um, we've, we're doing pictures today. Excellent. So the topic of today is how to use uh, utilize uh, timelines, um, and are we going to restrict the use of timelines in a specific uh, topic, or I say uh, in learning? Or well, I've got my you know what I'm known for. I've got my visual aid here, so I'm going to bring on my visual aid here. Oops, I might have to just adjust my camera slightly. Yes. So here is my new visual aid bought yes. by my lovely Hugh. Um, so that we can learn to see into the future. Brilliant. We like this. You like this, you see. So can you see it's beautiful? It's very, very heavy and very beautiful. So I thought what we do today is we would spend a bit of time seeing how we can see into the future. Yes. And plan our future in a very... Uh, in, the, in a very precise way to achieve the outcomes that we really want in our lives. Right. And the context is, I'll just move, I haven't got a name for it. So that's, the competition today is, can you name my crystal ball? Oh, I thought. Because I think all crystal balls should have a name. Shall we call it crystal ball? Uh, well, it's not very adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very yeah, creative, yeah. is it? Get yeah. the creative juices, but what can we call a crystal ball? We had a, I'm not sure how you call them in English, but in the Netherlands, we had a new waterway uh, somewhere uh, opened, and there was a competition to uh, uh, come up with a name for the new waterway. And then, uh, um, uh, that's a sluice, actually, a new sluice, but a very big oh, one. Uh, <laughs> it's exciting finding a name for a sluice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there was an international or national competition. There were many creative uh, names for it. And uh, this was located at a place called Eimuiden. And uh, one of the names that was uh, 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 that they uh, proposed was the Eimuiden Sluis. Yeah, well, that's very Dutch, isn't it? You're very, we had that the one that they chose. <laughs> we had a new. We had a competition on the island for our. Um, it's called a, a chain ferry and it goes across a very small piece of of the river estuary um and we've had one we had one that was working for years and years and years it worked perfectly well and they'd got a new one it's not worked since it's about four years old now and it never works but they had a competition to name it and they wanted something sort of with gravitas anyway the people of the island decided they wanted to call it floating mcfloke face Yes, now I know that we have uh, also uh, Boaty McBoat face. Well, that's why I was just after Boaty McBoat face, so it was yeah. floating with float face because it's the floating bridge. So oh. it didn't get called that. It was rejected oh. by the council. Unfortunately, it was a very appropriate name because it doesn't really float very often. So anyway, back to timelines. So we're going to be looking yes. at timelines. We're sort of going to look at them can mainly. You first, can you first explain timelines? What is a timeline? Okay, I'm I'm getting to that. Okay, sorry, <laughs> my bad. So so we all like humans, maybe animals as well. We don't really know. We can't represent time. Any uh, we can't because you can't sort of. It's, it's another dimension. So the only way we have to represent time is in space. 
So we have to use the idea of forward and backwards, left, right, up, down, to represent time to ourselves. So the first thing I would say to people, and this is a little quiz, if you think about that you're, this is now, where is tomorrow? And just in your mind, your, you just point to it and then tell us where it is. So Yost is pointing ahead of him. Yes. Anywhere point? Anybody pointing anywhere else? Are they going to talk to us? I'm not sure. They're not very interactive. Today. Not very interactive at the moment. Okay. Well, let's pretend then. So yours is so you so Yost is pointing in front of him. So his tomorrow is in front of him. Yes. And where is your yesterday, Yost? Behind? Is it directly behind you? No, a bit a bit behind me. Well, it's a bit behind you. It's quite good if it's not quite totally behind you because it means oh james is ahead well done jane thank you i knew i could rely on you for an answer maybe it could rely on somebody else in a minute we might hear from somebody else um if, if he's right behind you of course you can't learn anything from the past because you can't sort of see it right well, I so think you're without the, turning around <laughs> the most important part is is that if uh if the the mental pictures of, of images from the past uh, touch your uh, body then they get turned into feelings and you might not always want to feel whatever happened in the past uh, throughout the day. Yeah, well, you know, we need to be able to learn from the past and learn the lessons of the past, but not necessarily revisit feelings unless they're really lovely ones. Exactly. Um, so when we so, so we're going to do quite a few sessions on timelines, but this isn't a whole sort of like the whole timeline training. This is just a way of using time. Yes. To, as a motivational tool, really, to get right. yourself organized. Uh, you know, this is it's really a pertinent time of year because a lot of us, our young people are preparing for exams at this point in time. So I actually mm -hmm. developed this particular process to help young people get ready for their exams. But it's infinitely adaptable. Right. And can be used in a number of different ways. So it's again, it's one of my applications. So lots of people learn about timelines with their eyes shut, imagining stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a perfectly that's a very perfectly valid way of doing it. It's the way we tend to do it on on NLP training courses. But once again, as people will begin to learn from me, it's not always appropriate to go into a business meeting and say, "Oh, okay, everybody, close your eyes, shut your eyes, right. and I want you to imagine this." Sometimes you have to have more interaction. Sometimes you just don't want to any. You want it to be jargon free. And certainly, if I'm working with a group of sixteen year olds. By this time, this amount of this amount of explanation, I'd have lost them. Mm -hmm. So even this five minutes of explanation, right. they'd be going, uh, they'd be back on their phones, or they'd be doing something else. So it's really important sometimes just to get going with things, so, and then and, and worry about why it works later, um, and answer questions later. So have the experience first, mm -hmm. and then unpack the experience. And as right. you know, Yos, that's one of my uh, premises of of teaching excellence is to do it first, have the experience, right. and then. B reflect upon it it's it's a, a version of Cobb's learning cycle which um which we don't use enough of and we need to use lots of different ones but this one I, I think works really well if we just get on and do it and then figure out what happens what's right. happened so so in order to so if we so let's just take one more piece so let's imagine that we can represent time like you do mm -hmm. with the the future in front of us, right. straight ahead. You're that way for you, looking at me that way, right. and the past is behind you. Right. So that's how we're going to we're going to work with time. That's what we're going to imagine. Now we can do it in different ways. We can have it from left to right, right to left. I believe the Japanese like to do it up and down, but I don't really know for sure about that. Yeah. That's what the, that's what the mythology says. Um, yeah. But we're just going for the sake of argument to say it's ahead of us because our language often reflects that. Look, look into the future. Look right. ahead. Right. So we often, our language reflects that spatial awareness of time. So we're going to use it like that. Um, so this is an exercise that people can, so I'm going to talk you through an exercise and people can do this in their head. They can imagine it and then we can talk right. about the yeah. different component parts of it. Is that a good plan? Good plan. Good plan. Okay. So can we have my first slide, please? Oh, dear. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> we don't have to have it. 
I don't do it without, but it's just quite nice. Oh. Okay, there we are. So obviously the very first thing that people need to be able to do is to know what they want. Right. So um, because if you don't know what you want, it's really difficult to sort of aim everything, all the resources, all your motivation in the right direction. So, mm -hmm. so we need to set a goal. Now, in NLP, we, we use something called well-formed outcomes yes. to make sure that the goal is something that we want it's, mm -hmm. it's and it's achievable within and it's within our control so the you know the key principles of that is, is it's stated in positives it's not what they don't want so let's take that exam analogy it's if you ask somebody what they want and they said oh i don't want to i don't want to fail my maths right uh, it's not very helpful for them no. because not failing your maths is, doesn't send the brain in the direction you want it to go because the brain doesn't like negatives doesn't understand negatives so it goes you know I don't want to fail, goes fail exams, fail exams. Well, yeah. so we want to turn it around into I want to do well in my exams, I want to pass my exams, I want to get a grade one in my exams or whatever it is. And then, of course, it needs to be under their control. So, you know, you can't control. I want the examiner to give me a, 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 a distinction isn't something that's within your control. But doing right. everything you possibly can to make sure that the examiner thinks you're worth a distinction is... Right. So it's got to be under your control. It's got to be based in reality. So it's got to be something that you can see, hear, taste, smell, feel as an outcome. So it's not something that's sort of floating around in the ether. It's something that's grounded enough. Um, and it also needs to conform with what we call ecological. It needs to conform to your values. Right. Um, and we'll do a bit more work on this in another one. But that's essentially those are the four key things that we need to make sure that, uh, that a goal has before we know whether or not somebody's going to be able and wanting to and willing and motivated to achieve it. If we've got right. those four components in place, they are more likely to. And the secret is that actually once they've gone through that process, they move naturally closer to want to being able to get that result anyway. Because the very process of making it well-formed mm -hmm. leads a long way to the success. So just having the conversation. But having a conversation with some people about that is quite difficult. So go, you can go through the well-formed outcomes. People can do that. But I like to do things quickly and fun in a fun way. So Good. in this exercise... What I would do, and you can still do this with your executives, what? is get them to make a picture. Mm -hmm. So big pieces of paper, lots of colored pens, messy classrooms, as you know, that Yost doesn't like me messing up his training room, no. but uh, messy training rooms with lots of paint or pens or whatever, and have the person draw <coughs> what their success looks like. Right. We, did that, we used to do that in my uh, NLP master practitioner, where we had uh, uh, one day uh, about creativity and uh, a lovely artist would come in with lots of paint and pencils and she would do a whole day on uh, all kinds of things, draw your feelings stuff. But they would also do uh, draw what I call the 30 year plan. How, all right. How yeah, does, yeah. Your, how does your life look like in 30 years? Uh, but unfortunately, I used to hire, well, you know, in the in the uh, the Rose uh, Center, I used to hire a room, uh, and then it wasn't. Th then it didn't matter that it was all paint everywhere. But now I have my own room. <laughs> I don't like and now you have to clear up. Painted. Yeah, no, no, but the carpet <laughs> is just too valuable. <laughs> oh dear, yo! So your creativity has been hampered by the fact you've got your own training room. I think that's the desperately sad state of affairs i think we'll put yeah, that right yeah. in september i think we'll do some painting in september because it's yeah. like once you've got paint once you've got a paint splodge on your carpet you see there's nothing you can do about it then you may as well just live with the paint splodge no, there won't be anything. <laughs> well you could always get big sheets of paper and tape it down on the carpet big big paint we tried, policy we tried everything from uh, covering everything up but okay paint... so the message is guys and girls, if you're listening to this, don't go on. If you want to be creative, don't go on one of your trainings because it's not going to let you get messy or paint or anything like that. You have to come train with me if you want to do that. If you want to be messy, train with Kate. But we, yeah. we, we did replace it with three days of other creative stuff. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so I everything mean, you don't have to have paint. You could just have pencils and crayons and felt-tip pens or whatever. Um, I always do well, a lot of, of pencil work. Yeah. So the whole idea is once people then go, you know, and you can do all sorts of things to, in, in, you know, help to enhance that creativity, put some nice music on, um, get people to sort of just think themselves into their into what their goals are, what their objectives are, what they want, and and paint and draw a picture in whatever way they want to represent their success. Right. Because that then enables them, without actually going through the verbally going through the steps of well formed outcomes, to to do the process without right. without being hindered with the language of um, of NLP language. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yes. So, so once we and it's quite important that this is a big picture, mm-hmm. because if you if you draw a little a little tiny picture of your goals and it's really really small, then it's very difficult to get excited about it and to see it in your future. So you need a big picture with big pieces of paper so that people so that it creates a big anchor in their minds. Now an anchor. I suppose we haven't clarified what an anchor is, have we? No. So an, a, an anchor is is something that um, exists in a representational system, like a visual image or a sound, um, that that brings back that's that's in one representation system that brings back the totality of the experience. So right. if you've sat and thought about everything you want to achieve in your goal and you've got all the good feelings and you've got all the things that you're saying to yourself about it and it's a total experience and you get that down on paper, you naturally create an anchor. Every time you look at that picture, the rest of it will come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> messy trainings yeah oh that's a vote Lily. for trainings lily thank you um so um, does that make sense so so you know a lot of the things that we're talking about here is we're utilizing nlp without we're not making it explicit we're just doing nlp rather than explaining right. nlp um, because because people don't ha- always want to learn NLP. They just want the mm-hmm. results. They want the outcomes. And sometimes we don't have time to do all of those things. So I'm going into, I mean, it's very pertinent that we're doing this today because I'm going into a school soon okay. um, as a quick fix because I'm going to mm-hmm. go and work with the 100 year 13. So they're just coming into their last, ex- they're just about to take their last exams. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's a bit late. I would have liked to have gone in in February or March, but right. you go when you can. Um, and this is the sort of process that we're going to do. Now, I have them for an hour, so I can't mm-hmm. teach them all about NLP well-formed outcomes, all about timelines, all about representation systems. So I just have to do it with them Yes. and give them the great experience. And then they might go, wow, that was really good. Maybe they want right. to learn a bit more. Or maybe they just take that away and they're successful in their exams, which is my aim. So we do the one one question. You're going to train the kids. Yes, I'm going to train the kids. Yeah, and the teachers will be there, and hopefully, if they're smart enough, they'll be able to do it themselves and save themselves some money next year. But um, they don't usually. They usually go, "Oh, we have to get that person back again." I don't really understand that, but um, or they'll be drinking coffee in the staff room, having an hour off. Yes, whilst I'm with them. So um, I'm actually doing a much bigger program for the year twelves because we've actually got ahead with them, mm-hmm. um, which is which will incorporate this. But this is I'm doing this with them next week because this is a quick fix. It's a quick to fix them to get the them G'd up and ready for their exams. So, okay, so we've drawn it. We've got a picture. We've spent five or ten minutes doing that. And then what we do is we have we, – we need a big space for this, inside or outside, a nice room. And we ask them to stand in a place that is their present. Right. And imagine where this goal, where this successful point is, this goal is. So if it's an exam, where is it in space? Or if it's um, a a marathon or, you know, something that people are working towards or a performance or a presentation or whatever it is, or sales pitch, where is it ahead of them? And um, what you'll notice quite often is that people will put it quite a long way away. Right. 
um because it's sort of like oh tomorrow manana i'll you know i'll i'll put it off a bit more so they often put it a long way away if, if you think about in a, in a 30 year plan then of course the 30 years is far away yeah and that's far that's fair enough in fact and you want the 30 years to be probably a really long way away because you've got lots of time and lots of wonderful things to do before you get to the 30 years exactly, yes so there are times when you want it way way off but there are also times when you want it a bit closer because what i notice when i'm working with with um, young people if mm -hmm. I do this more than one week, so if I if we do their picture and I say put the picture down where where they think you know the exam is, if I come back the next week, it's moved back almost exactly the same distance. Okay. <laughs> so so the distance between them and mm -hmm. the exam stays the same. So it's this it's here this week, and then they come in next week, and it's like that when it but should be reality, like that. Yes, in reality, exam is coming closer. <laughs> yeah. The reality is it's coming closer. So that's often the first thing you want to do is you want to move it towards them. So what right. I will often do is I'll go and hold the picture up in front of me so I'm like the picture, and then I'll take two steps forward and say, how does that feel? But that's, the, people, that's, that's the success picture, not the exam the picture. Oh, this is the success. No, the, the, the picture is of success. It's about yes. the exam, but there aren't two pictures. There's just one big successful picture. Okay, but it's the success at exam picture. Yeah, well, if the, or whatever the context is. In this context, I'm, yeah. I'm pretending I'm using the exam one. To see. So then you move it forward a couple of steps and ask them how that feels. And it quite often is really interesting to watch people because sometimes they go like this. Yes. And they actually want to the, physically move away. Those are the five nine mediators. <laughs> So often it intensifies some of the, you know, it might intensify some of the, the unpleasant or the, oh, my God, I've got to get going sort of feelings, which which um, might not be very pleasant, but they are useful because you're going to sort of drive, use those. You know, even if it's panic, you can use the panic to, to drive some yes. behavior. My experience is that if you move the pictures in the future closer to people, that they actually uh, they uh, I say uh, yeah, they feel oh shit now I really have to do something and especially the exactly. mediators don't like that at all. No, they one, don't uh, like. One, one, one aside, uh, if people want to know more about the thirty-year plan, I put in uh, I have an ebook on it, and I put in the link of in, in the chat I put the link to my ebook. The ebook is called the thirty-year plan as a healthy alternative to Dilt's logical levels for those people who uh, miss out on the link. You can find it through Google, uh, and then it explains the whole procedure to uh, create your own 30-year plan. But this was an aside. Great. Yes. Yes, I uh, huh? So, so now we've got so so yeah. So you can play around with that and see. Now, what you don't want to do, you might want to move it closer so it provides a bit of propulsion, but right. not so close that it creates panic. Mm hmm. Um, so you want you want to go like you want to get to the point where the person's thinking, oh, I really need to get on with this rather right. than, oh, my goodness, it's too late. Yes, it's too late. I may as well just give up. So so that's a sort of balance you have to find and keep it lighthearted and fun because it should be mm -hmm. fun because we want to anchor all the good feelings associated with it. Yes. OK, so so now we've got a reasonable distance between the, the present and the event, the success of the event. Can you have my next slide, please? You. If you I hope Jane is liking these pictures. I've went to a lot of trouble to find these pictures for you, Jane. One moment. <laughs> Should be up and running again. Please repeat your question. No, we haven't got a new slide up yet. Yeah, I'm going to put up the new slide. Okay. There, there we, we are. Go. There we go. Action. So the next step is to have the person walk the town timeline, putting down markers. Mm -hmm. next. So Jane says she loves the pictures. Oh, um, 
the joys the joys of powerpoint um so you so so you can use whatever you've got pens lolly sticks post-it notes or whatever so you have somebody move up the timeline saying what is it that they need to do what is what action did they need to take at what point to get to wherever it is they want to be so if they're running a marathon they need to say well, okay well i need to work out so many times in the gym i need to run five miles this week and build up to 10 miles or whatever it is so you've got some right. some plan in action so you, you a strategy a strategy yeah so this makes up your strategy is the steps that you're going to take to to positively achieve the outcome that you want right and you just mark those and move towards towards them and then what's my have i got a picture of this one and then I, haven't got, then... I haven't got a picture for the next one. I missed no. this one. <laughs> Never mind. So then what, once they get to that point of um, their success, they get mm -hmm. to their picture, that's when you use all your language and enthusiasm resources to get them to reaccess that really amazingly positive feeling of success. Right. And actually move it slightly further forward. So take the feeling beyond that point of success. Mm -hmm. So that they can, and then this is where you get the cheeky bit. You turn them round. Okay. So they're now in their future looking you're, at. You already moved them on the line through yeah, the Yeah, move them steps. on the line. So that here's their starting point. Here's success. They've right. gone from there to here. Yes. And then they've gone beyond that. Yes. Slightly. Up, up further, yes. Yeah. And then they turn around. Right. I get it. Yeah. So they're looking back at a imaginary, albeit, but it doesn't feel imaginary, it's a past. Right. So this is, and of course, if you know anything about language, what's helpful here is to start to change the tense that you talk to people in. Yes. So you, you, you're looking back now. So you say, instead mm -hmm. of saying, how will it feel when you're successful, you turn around and say, how does it feel now that you have been successful? Okay. Hmm. So, what did you do to, in, if you start during the walking process? That you use the present tense and you say okay yes yes so as you're moving and then forward, you look back and you use actually the uh, past tense and yes. say okay can you now see how it felt to achieve the success yes that's right so you 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 so you so you're moving forward say it's a week so we're moving forward a week now so now we're a week further forward how does it feel or how, what are you what are you needing to do now so everything is in the present 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 Mm -hmm. The future is a really unhelpful tense for getting people to do stuff in. Yes. So so you want to be using the present tense when it's about doing things. People don't do things in the future. They do mm -hmm. it in the now. So yes. now we're this week. Now we're tomorrow. Now we're the next day. Whatever it is, it's the now. Till we get to the success and we move slightly beyond, beyond the success, mm -hmm. turn round so we can see our point of success and all the steps we've taken exactly have taken have that we have taken and then i need my next slide please Here there's only three i keep it to three for you yours and then we move back down the timeline through mm -hmm. our past future past right and we gather the resources we need because we've had the experience of doing all the things so what did we learn here Oh, well, we learned we really need to focus our attention. What did we learn here? Oh, we need to sort of really try hard and dig deep here. Or whatever. So we gather the resources we need going back down the timeline mm -hmm. to the present. Right. So then we've gathered, we've, we've been into the future, we've seen our success, we've brought our success back with us, so we've got a really mm -hmm. good and we've gathered all the resources that we need. Right. And then we turn round again. Mm -hmm. And usually what's happened is that it's come a bit closer in there. They often people will say, Well, I want to move my I want to move it closer now. Right. And then you ask the question, so how do you feel about getting on with this task now? Whatever mm -hmm. it is. 
So that's a really simple way of utilizing timeline work in a very practical way to get people's motivation, their their you know degree of success that they're likely to achieve, um, overcoming procrastination because that's the, you know one of the big ones. Um, helps people to meet deadlines. You know, those are all the things that that uh, that an exercise like this can help with. Right, and then when they get back to the now, they turn around again. Yeah. Yeah, they look back to the to the, their future, but they have already been there, so it's also their past. Yeah, it's also their past, and they've gathered all the resources that they need. And of course, they've done it. What it feels like they've done it once already, which is makes it much easier yes. to do something the second time. So, so do you ask them to uh, now look again at the whole future, and then uh, ask them, okay, can you see what can you see in the now what you have done uh, to achieve this result? I don't usually do that. I just go. Okay. So when are you going to start? All right. I mean, you can have that conversation, but you don't really want people to get very cerebral about it. You want them to just, you know, sometimes they're out the door going, go away now, I need to get on with this or whatever, or I'm off. Right. That's that's a good, that's the better test. We can finish with this slide now. We don't need it now. But that's a better test than actually having a conversation with people about mm -hmm. what it is that they've done is actually to say, so what are you going to, you know, how do you feel now? What are you going to do next? Right. And often they're like, well, I'm, I'm not having this conversation with you anymore because I've got stuff to do and places to be and things to get on with. And which is the measure that you've, that's your test that, you've, yes. that you've actually, you know, you, the piece of work su successful. Mm -hmm. So that's a very formal way of doing it. And there are, you know, you can play with this um, in a much more simple way. Mm -hmm. Um one of the things that I do um, quite often using the same technique, but just much simpler is if I've got somebody that's working on something and they're stuck, Yes. I use timelines to unstick them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, in, you know, I work with young people a lot, but you know, or learners a lot. So if somebody is stuck on a project and they don't know what they're going to do next, you know, I stuck, I don't know what the answer is. I can't work out this maths problem or I don't know what the next thing to do in on this drawing, this technical drawing or, does it or work, I'm not. Uh, does it I'm, work with a mini uh, writer block? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I'm currently, I, I need to uh, create a... Uh, Taoistic uh, hypnotic meditation each and every day. I have not been doing it for five days because I am have a, uh, a, a mini writer's block. Mini writer's <laughs> because I was very busy. Yeah. Okay, well that's a good one. That's a good one. So, so, so me. well, yeah, yeah, okay. So we might have to move around a bit because again, you, we've got this thing about we're doing it on a screen, so we're limited on this. Yeah. Um, but what? So, so do you? No, it's okay. No, no, just come back, come back. So, so is that? Are you? Is that where you work? Where you are now? Is that where you you do your creative yes, writing? I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, so you're I'm, in your creative writing space. Yes. Okay, so what is it that you're that what what is it that you're stuck with? Well, I am doing 365 hypnotic meditations. So we have one for each and every day. I'm currently at uh, from memory uh, 214. That's a, uh, I say, a very uh, big project uh, with uh, uh, where where I need a formula to uh, to inspire me to write each every day uh, a new one, and I use a book called uh, Taoistic Meditations or 365 Taoistic Meditations, and then like the first 150 of those were great, but then I think the writer actually got into the same problem that I'm experiencing now. <laughs> <laughs> which is that 365 of those things are freaking freaking many of them i say it's just a lot of things to do so they the quality of the uh, source that i use uh, for inspiration is uh, is dropping quite rapidly uh, and i can just see that he's going through the same thing that i'm going through and oh uh, well there's a lot of identification going on so what i what i want you so you but you've done a hundred and da, 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 whatever 240. 240. So you, you really only, you're more only than down the line. Yeah. Huh? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to imagine now mm -hmm. that you've written this one that's caused that's a bit tricky dicky. Yes. It's a bit tricky, right? But so actually, you sat actually, down. This one is called withdrawal. Withdrawal, okay. So <laughs> like command, withdrawal, oh, withdrawal. Maybe that's what the problem is. <laughs> I know, yeah, I, I figured it out myself as well. 
<laughs> so what I want you to do, Yos, is I want you to imagine, I want you to relax, take a deep breath and imagine that you've just got into that state where you've just put your pen down or you've closed the file with that sense of satisfaction that you've done number 200 and blah, 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 whatever. 215 and I'm doing control P. Control P. Print it. Right. Print. I know that if, okay. if I can print it, then I can record it. And even if I'm not in the mood, I can still make the recording reasonably okay. And uh, uh, but the writing is the is the, the crucial. Okay, so you've uh, pressed P, right? So you've pressed yeah. P. I want you to imagine that you've pressed P. Yeah, and I can imagine done. it very well. It's huh? done, right? Yes, it's done. It is done. Yes. yes. So now I want you to stand up and I want you to I'm imagine. Right, well, you stand up. I want you to imagine that you're over here with me. Uh, I, want okay, to, I, <laughs> I want you to come over here. I want you to look. Well, you can move. I tell you what, move back into. On, uh, move back, move back, move back. Okay, now do it like that. So now I want, to, I want you to look at yourself in your chair, pressing oh. P. Yes. As you just okay. done. Okay. Yes. Now. So this is so now you're you, so 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 you've watched yourself do it. Yes. And um, I want you to think now. What did it take for you to get there? What 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 need yes. what happened in order for you to get to the point of pressing P? Yes, I have to write uh, two pages. Okay. How hard is that? Very hard. How? Why is it very hard? Because I don't know what to write. But you've just done it. I don't. But, okay, uh, so I want you to now. Okay, come back over here. All right. Because you've been very awkward as usual. So come back yeah. in. So now you finished, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to imagine that you finished. You've done yeah. it. A move. Standing up. You finished now. It's all yes. done. It's in the bag. It's in the can. Yeah. All you need to do is record it. Back up. And as you back up, I want you to imagine you're going, you're looking at the person start, the, you're, you're starting to write this. Right. Yes. Okay. So having done it, mm -hmm. and I want you to give Yos who's starting to write it some advice. Right. About what he needs to do now, because you've done it and he hasn't. Mm -hmm. So what yes. advice can you give him to help him get this two pages of writing done? In um, yes. So uh, just uh, just write anything. Just start writing. Okay. Just start writing. Yeah. Stop thinking. Start writing. Stop thinking. Start writing. What yes. else? Well, what else will help? Uh, I could, but I have to go further back. That is during the daytime and make little notes. Uh, that's what okay. I do most of the time, so I can. Uh, so it needs to like uh, it's not it's not a much. It's that's very big letters because I print it and I have to read it. Um, so it's, uh, in normal time it might even be uh, one and a half page. So what I usually do is come up with little topics. Right. And what happens then is that I go through the little topics that I am basically using as the structure of the uh, meditation. And then my brain goes, yes, this is really important. This is great. This, should, this, this is very important information. You should share that with the world. And I, so I came up already with a couple of those ideas. For okay, uh, uh, stop. Uh, oh. So you've now given, I want you to back up again, move back. I want you to see the host. Yes. It's not written it yet. And you're, you're his teacher. Right. So you're going to you're, you're going to instruct him now mm -hmm. with all of that those that that those wise words all that learning that you've already had. So you you're going to say write any old rubbish, right? Write any old rubbish. Stop thinking. Start writing. But before you do that, get a whole load of little post-it notes, and every time you get a good idea, write them down. Write it down. Any old rubbish. Any old idea. And then sort them out and see which the really exciting ones are, the ones that you really need to share with the world that are really important. Right. Okay. So now I want you to come back into the Yost that's there. That's, yes. How does the Yost feel now about writing the new one? Uh, better. Better. Uh, Good. I I'll take that. I feel <laughs> confident that uh, I'm going to write one today and that the mini uh, writer's block of five days is uh, passed. Ideally, I write I write uh, three rather than one, so I can, uh, I say, uh, 
make up for lost time. Well, you can just start with one. Yeah, no, I have to start with one. And that's um, see, see, so the, it's a simple a mini little writer's book. You just move somebody. What you do is you take them to what we did, exactly the same process as we did in, in the big space. We right. take the person to the end of where they've su succeeded and then we move them further into the future to advise themselves, which is actually giving them the resources, right. advise themselves on what they need to do. They become their own tutor. Because people have, we know, don't we, one of the premises of, of NLP is that everybody has the resources within them. Yes. So it's just about bringing out the resources they already have to utilize. And yeah. you just use that shift away. So what I will say in a, a training room with somebody who's stuck is I just say, oh, just come stand over here with me for a moment and look back at yourself. So I just use my language to get them to take that step. Imagine that you've done it now and they're sitting there and what advice, da, 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 whatever. And then you get them to advise themselves. Right. Oh, what? So Jane's got a question. <clears throat> yes, I think so. so we What's that? Tips that may help my teens allow mam to help them with the timeline experience. Well, Jane, you might not be the best person. You see, because mams are always, they're always sort of like not very cool with teenagers, really. You probably probably better off finding somebody else to work with your kids. Um, but but it's don't do it. What I would say is, if you want to do it, be um, surreptitious about it. So don't say, "Hey boys, we're going to do some timeline work to help you with your exams." Just use these the linguistic ruses that we've discussed and talked about. Um, to 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 with them so hopefully you sneak in those little bits of of change as rather than say we're doing this big thing most of my my kids would just go no i'm not doing that with you you're doing that nlp thing on me go away so you have to just learn to do it very quietly the other thing that i use a lot with can I, them, can I, can I add one to thing do it yeah it also helps especially with timelines is just assume because basically what the brain does is there are two, how you say, default timelines. One is running from uh, uh, the present in, in your head on the eye level in, in front of you and uh, to the back. That's one that we have. And the other one is going from left to right, yeah. which is more about time management. And um, yeah, just assume that they uh, have their future in front of them. Uh, and whatever you think that is important to, to be put on their timeline, uh, just describe it as, uh, oh, wow, eh, I, you're going to have this exam. I hope it's going to be a success that you're going to party afterwards, that it will be great. And, oh, and you will do so well and it will be wonderful. And then after you've described this picture, this mental picture, just take your hands and use your body language to uh, move it to their timeline. Just say, okay, here, and, and I'm not going to say you have to do it, but uh, just uh, let it, no, whatever, let it go here. And then you put it somewhere on their timeline because their unconscious mind will understand what you do. And their, their conscious mind will go, oh, mom is just uh, babbling on again. Uh -huh. And they had no, uh, I say, no, uh, um, no conscious uh, ID that you're actually uh, doing an exercise with them. Mm, that's right. And, and, and yeah, you're quite right. And the, I think that's a use, use, useful thing to do. Just whack it in there on their timeline without them knowing. Um, but I'm not sure it's that ethical, but it's your kids. So do whatever do whatever gets them to. I know what your concerns is. They've probably got their exams coming up, haven't they, Jane? And it's like, how do I get my boys to sit down and write? Just bear in mind that boys, I don't know what it is about boys. They just have to leave it until they're at the last minute. So many of them just have to leave it until they're Media cramming version. all night. Um, and it makes it makes the parents panic. Um especially the mothers who sort of don't tend to do it that way. Um, but honestly, that's sometimes just the way they have to do it. And you have to let them get on with it. It's, it's, a, they, it's they're just wired differently. Um, the trouble is it works really well with lower level exams. They can usually do quite well. But once you get to the hires, whatever the hires are in whatever country you're doing, it tends where you need some more critical thinking skills and you need to be able to draw different information from different places, it doesn't work quite so well. But if they're doing their GCACs, then that's often what they'll do. The other thing that I do with teenagers, sorry. One yeah. You said ethical. 
Uh, what is this uh, ethical ethics? Uh, what are you talking about? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm kidding. I just want to ask you. I you was also, kidding as well. You also mentioned uh, ec 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 your, uh, ec ecology. Yeah. Uh, can you, uh, uh, I say, what is the uh, uh, relation or the differences between ethics and ecology? Okay. Well, ethics is to do with whether or not you're acting in the best interest of the other person. And whether or not you're whether you're coming from the right place, if you like, you're doing things for the right reasons, right. making the, taking the right action for the right reasons is really the es essence of ethics. Ecology is different. In the, ecology is about checking with the individual whether or not it's a value to the individual and whether or not it challenges their values. So, you know, if you say to your teenagers, um, okay, so you know what, if you stay in on Friday night and Saturday night, and you go to bed at, you know, at 10 o'clock every night, and you get up at eight o'clock in the morning and revise for the next eight hours, you will pass your exam. It's not going to happen. Because it, 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 they have other things that are more important to them. So, so actually, um, you, you know, not going out with your mates, not seeing your girlfriend, not partying or whatever, and you deny all of those things that are very, very highly valued for teenagers, then they just won't do it because it's not ethical for them. It's not so it's it's not ecological for them. Right. It doesn't fit with their values. Um, and so you have to look to see what will be you know where where the friction will be with things that they're doing now now my way of resolving this is very simple with 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 the exam thing uh, or with you know with planning prepping studying uh, you know anything that requires that is to start with a 24 hour timeline a 24 hour timetable rather so it goes from 8 to 8 and i have people do really simple things like first of all you work backwards so rather most people will go like okay put in when you're going to study Right. as like the most important thing no i don't start at that end i start at the other end and i say put in where you'll when you're asleep mm -hmm. and make sure that they're realistic because they'll all pretend they go to bed at 11 o'clock at night and get up at seven but they don't you know they're up at three or four because they've got all their melatonins working differently and stuff so they actually put in when they sleep you know we know that they stay up half of friday night and sleep most of saturday or, or whatever it is so they actually realistically put in where they sleep and what you know and then and then they put in what are those really important things for them now that might be things like working if they've got part-time jobs it might be work that's really important it might be full-time job for some people or it also might be you know time time with your friends or your family or your loved ones or whatever is very important so this isn't about somebody else's idea of what's important this is what's your in your life is important right so so it's not this isn't about achieving stuff this is about being mm -hmm. it's really important that people value their being stuff their you know their their everyday what they enjoy doing what keep, what makes life worth it for them right. um you know i i uh, one of the things like for example you know one of the things that makes life worth it for me is walking my dog um, mm -hmm. And if I had to give up that in order to achieve something else, it's likely to fall down the list because actually that's something that is just in my life that that is important. So so you put those important things in. So you've got your work or you've got your and then you put your schooling in or your other work or whatever it is you're doing so that you can see what you've got left. Mm hmm. And actually, that in itself is quite a good thing, because then you go, gosh, I haven't got a lot of time. <laughs> so instead of going, getting up on Sunday and going, I have to study all day, it's like, actually, I've only got an hour and a half here because I want to watch the football or I'm going to go and play football. And then I've got another hour and a half after that before I go to my nan's for tea. And it starts to it starts to make those slots of time valuable that you have. So you make the most of them rather than just whittle them away on a computer game or something so that's one of my one you know one of the ways that i uh, i like to, to to help teenagers oh we've got another question i can't read that does i'll, I'll read it does okay. learning good bad decisions into this timeline be included if so would you include it before going into the future or looking back giving yourself advice from a future point of view Good decisions are always important. 
um, and and build them in wherever you can. Yes, of course. I mean, going forward, you need to make the good decision. You know, the first good decision is it. What what's your goal? That's a decision. Making making the decision that that is your goal is a positive uh, decision rather than okay. a, a bad decision. Taking deciding what the steps are; those are all good decisions. Turning back round and gathering the resources, deciding what the resources is; those are all good decisions. So, yeah, all, at each point, look for all the good decisions that you want to build in, and remember that people make good decisions when they're in good states. The better they feel, the better the decisions will be made. The worse they feel, the worse the decisions will be. Um, so, yes, I would build that in. Um, uh, every opportunity really. we leave the bad decisions out of it yeah we don't do bad decisions no no but the oh, other yeah. thing that i just wanted to mention is a sort of um a technique for um, working with people a bit surreptitiously um which works very well with young people it works with everybody actually i use it with my partner but he doesn't know i do um but, and but he's it, watching now <laughs> he might be I don't, I don't know i doubt it He's probably doing something for him and his things much more important. Um, but you know, but but it particularly works with tricky conversations with young people, and I call it talking to the ether. And it's a, it's a, it's one of the it's one of the um, Milton language patterns, really. Um, so I will start off by saying, do you know, I had a really interesting experience today when I was talking to Samantha. And then I describe the situation with Samantha, which is exactly the one that I'm wanting to have the conversation with, with my child about. And then she said, and I said, and they said, and then she did this. And quite often, because it's just, it's they're often half listening anyway. So you're, you're bypassing all the conscious stuff and it's sort of drifting in at an unconscious level. Plus it's not challenging because it's not like, I want you to sit down and do your revision now because I'm your mother or your father or your carer. Um, it's talking about somebody else. So it's, it's second, it's removed from you. So it's less threatening and it's more likely to be accepted. And it's softer. So it's like, and if they do get the chance, oh, well, yes, I know you're not the same, but I was just talking about Samantha there. So it's, it gives you an in and an out more easily. So I used to talk about all the tricky conversations, you know, all the contraceptive conversations and the, 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 the girlfriend, boyfriend conversations and the riding bikes conversations and all those things I would have in the ether. Um, and of course, you can also uh, uh, do that... Uh, what you just explained to talking to the ether and combine it with actually uh, ex uh, explaining or uh, talking about how you did a complete uh, technique with uh, somebody else. Mm, so if you yes. want to do the, the timeline stuff with your own kids, you can say, hey, I helped uh, this uh, neighborhood kid and he had problem with his exams and we did the whole procedure and you can basically explain it as if you, uh, yeah. uh, and you talk about what you've done to some other kids, not to your own kids. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, it was quite interesting. I um, uh, some some people may may know him, but a good friend of mine, Paul Boros, um, has a lovely son. And uh, when when he was younger, um, Paul gave him um, um, a C, the the revision coach um, download CD that that I have, um, and that I did, and it's still available. Um, and um, it was quite funny because, you know, he'd been talking to his kids about he's talking to him about revising and trying to help and trying to help and trying to help. And his son came downstairs and said he, he gave him the CD and it was months before, he, you know, he listened to it or whatever. And eventually he listened to it and he came downstairs and he said, Dad, do you know this woman? <laughs> he said, and, he, and Paul said, yes, I do. <laughs> he went, can I talk to her? <laughs> Said. So again, you know, sometimes it's just the other person. There wasn't really anything different I was saying than than his dad had been saying, but it was coming from somebody else. So anything that sets up that one step removed um, helps a lot. So you can, you know, you can be one step removed, as you said, by saying, "Oh, I was working with such, such a body." So you know, that's how I often do it. I was, I often say, "Oh, I worked with Paul Boris's son and did this and this and this." Um, yeah, so cool. that works quite nicely. And now you're doing it as well. Mm. Yes. You're programming <laughs> gain her brain by talking about something <laughs> that you uh, did with Paul Boras. That's mm. uh, you're demonstrating what you're teaching. Really? <laughs> 
like I, I didn't I, notice. <laughs> yes, I know what you were doing. I, I, you I know what I was I doing. Wrong. Yes, I thought, hmm, I've heard this, I've heard this trick before. Uh, actually, I heard it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> You certainly did. You certainly did. Right. Well, I think that's. I think we've wrapped that up. Really, has anybody got any other questions? Yes. So we're at the end of the hour. This is uh, question time. If you have questions for Kate, please put them in the chat. If you watch this later or listen to it later, you can always uh, mail me or Kate. Uh, Kate yeah, absolutely. Uh, or contact me anywhere through the social media or whatever. We are love to hear from you. Yeah, and thank you for coming along today. It's always yes. a deep joy. So um, I have, can I just ask, has anybody got a name for my crystal ball yet? Yes, I think they forgot about it. I forgot about we my need, crystal ball. There's a, uh, I say, we need to find a name for the, Kate's crystal ball, and she refused crystal ball. I, I suggest <laughs> crystal ball. As the well, it's name currently for called crystal ball. crystal ball, and that's its default name. It's crystal yes. ball. But if somebody comes up with something more exciting, I might, I might um, accept that. We'll see. That can be the challenge for next week. So, on the topic of next week, it will be on uh, Tuesday again, one p.m. Uh, Central European Standard Time or noon uh, Greenwich time, and the. Uh, Topic will be uh, how are your question skills? We will train you uh, to become better at asking questions. And we have a name. Jane comes up with Bessie. Bessie. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll settle for Bessie. Thank oh, you very I, much, Jane. Can I, don't, can, I, can I at least improve it to Chrissy? Can Chrissy. Still... Chrissy the crystal ball. Chrissy the crystal ball. Well, it's Bessie name. the ball. <laughs> oh, Lily, Lily has also a suggestion. Kate Lucius. <laughs> Kate Lucius, Kate Lucius. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to start. It's my new training skill. Is I've never been a very good scryer. So I've um, apparently now got to learn to be. I've always, I was, wasn't a very competent scryer. So I think I'm going to have to see if I can improve my sky, scrying skills in time for the next NLP magic. Well, yes. Uh, actually, we, had, we did have a question when the new uh, NLP magic, uh, the universe will be held. Oh, right. So, mm. Well, we did say we we're going to do it on the island. I need to put some dates together, but uh, apologies for people who are waiting for the dates. I've got to have a knee operation, and I don't want to put out the dates until I've actually right. got, hopefully I found out understand. roughly when that's going to be, So, because I don't so, want to have to cancel it again. So as soon can as I... Crystal, can you use your crystal ball for the opening of the US market? Uh, for this well, no, I've got to see whether I'm going to, when I'm going to have my knee operation, I thought. Oh. Was the next no, thing. no, no, no. We nowadays do a course on stock trading, and uh, if you can predict the future, that would help us a lot. Well, I believe I was very impressed that you designed a game for that. I was very yes, impressed. You do these. Uh, you you talked about in the previous uh, episode, I think episode the, the first one uh, that you wanted to uh, set people uh, to prepare them for learning. So we did actually. There's a there is a game, some kind of monopoly that has changed with uh, but then with stocks. It's called Filthy Rich, <laughs> and they have all these uh, companies uh, that you can buy. Rather than uh, and Monopoly, you buy streets, and here you buy uh, uh, companies. So we didn't play that game. I used the, 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 their resources uh, to do it, but uh, they were great, uh, great names like the, uh, the 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 Monkey Strip Bar and uh, stuff like that. And uh, and we actually did not work completely as I planned because I wanted to demonstrate the principles of how the stock market works uh, or, or how the psychology of the stock market uh, works within the group. And that did not always work, but uh, I think about half of the time they actually saw, hey, we can now see why stock either rise or decline or, or why uh, stock go to zero uh, just by playing the game and it set the mood right. for, for the complete weekend. So thank you very much. More than welcome. Yes. More than welcome. We might look at games later on again. It might be one of the things we do in the future. Good. Thank you very much, Joost. Thank you for having me and thank you for coming, everybody. Well, thank you for uh, taking your time and answering all our questions, especially my awkward questions. And, <laughs> uh, well, hopefully we see everyone again uh, next week uh, when we will do uh, How Are Your Questioning Skills. Bye-bye, mm. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.